Hey guys, it's Baban and I'm back with another speed draw thing and this time I'm doing some little icons. Now this one was a commission and we're going to be flipping between that one and some other little smaller ones that I did of my own characters as examples. There'll be a link down in the description to my commission information if you're interested in getting one for yourself or for someone else. Okay, so here we go. I'm starting off with that first one that was a bit more rendered. Now it's more of a character portrait than an icon, but I think the commissioner was intended to use it as an icon, but they wanted it a little bit more kind of towards a more finished kind of painted cell shaded kind of style that I've been working on. I'll put a link to another video at the end where I talk more about developing this style. Now this dude's a little bird dude, he's got like wings and feathers and stuff and like scales on his nose and because he's a little bird dude I wanted to really exaggerate his nose and make it like a lot bigger. <laughs> so that's that sketch of him done, let's have a look at the other ones. Now with these I was just trying to kind of do some little examples and I've got a bunch of OCs that I don't really say anything about because I'm kind of still writing the thing uh, to do with. Um, but I kind of like developing them by drawing them a bit and I thought it'd be interesting to do some examples of little simple icons that I can do for people. Now the basis for these is I want it to be something cheap that people can buy um, that don't take me too long so I'm trying to time myself on these so that I can do them for as cheap as possible for people. Um, I also want them to be like lined nicely and I want them to just have flat colours so they're not overly detailed and they're not going to take too long but they're still going to look nice. Something that I also wanted to do with them was make them not just the face or not just a square frame but so it's like a bit of a bust of a character and it's framed by like just a simple circle in the back so that um, there's something for them to be silhouetted against. I also wanted them to be like this because then potentially these can be used as like buttons for something, they can be used as stickers made into stickers of people's characters. Um, it's not just like a one use thing like an icon would be. Um, like really small like you can use it for whatever you want like printing out or like buttons like I mentioned. I just think it's a little bit more interesting than a regular square icon and it allows you to like add just a little bit more of the character and make them a little bit more interesting and give them a little bit more interest. I've also, just by the by, I have had a few people suggest that maybe I could slow some of my stuff down a little bit because it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. I slowed this one down by about a third of what I usually do so you can see it a little bit easier. Um, I can't really slow it down too much because otherwise it's just going to go on for ages and I don't have the time to let my computer kind of render stuff that's super long. I do have a few long videos that are of streams that I've done so let me know if you guys would be interested in me making those public for you to go and watch and let me know if this kind of speed is a little bit more comfy than what it usually is. Uh, anyway now, I am back to sketching and I had my little base sketches but I didn't really like them too much, especially some of them they needed a bit more noodling out so I'm just going and cleaning up some of those. I redrew one of them um, to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, just changing bits, cleaning it up so that I can go straight in and do the lines from these. I don't really want to have to redraw them again because like I mentioned it's something that I want to be able to do quickly. And just finishing noodling this dude out, making sure that everything looks right. Some of the hands looked a little bit off, so I had to go and clean those up on most of them. Uh, because like folded arms are kind of difficult figuring out where the hands need to go. I'm also trying to make sure that they're all like a consistent size and fit into the frames nicely. And aren't going to be scrunched up super duper small if someone does decide to use them as an icon. Making sure that the hair looks right, isn't looking crap, <laughs> not just the shape. And back to this one, so now I've got the sketch with this one, uh, I'm going and doing the lining. I'm making sure to add a little bit more line weight on this one, especially where I know I'm going to be keeping the line art. Um, the style that the commissioner requested was one without line art, where it was more just um, the colour blocks that were defining everything, so um, this new style that I mentioned. Uh, so I'm trying not to spend too long on the line art, but it's going to give me a base for where the colours are going to go and some of it's going to be staying in place. Most of what's going to be gotten rid of is the lines around the outside so that there isn't really a sharp dark line around the edge of everything, it's more just the colours contrasting against each other um, and the values that kind of separate the shapes out. So now I'm making sure to get all the values kind of separate so that we've got a darker colour against the face and everything and the hoodie isn't too dark um, or too light so that it's kind of the same as his skin. Um, I wanted to make it a little bit lighter on the inside just so we've got um, like a bit of a different colour and it's not just all solid colour. 
um, adding in the little details on the flats. And now that I've got those, I can start looking at what kind of colors I want to do the shading with. And I'm picking one for the light and one for the dark. And I thought red and blue will go really nice together. And now I've got those. I'm going to start picking away at the line art, just erasing a little bit of it. So see what it looks like with these colors over the top. And we'll be back to that one in a minute. We're going to go and do the lines for these other ones. Now I've got all the sketch cleaned up how I want it. Uh, just tweaking it again a little bit. Um, I'm trying to make the lines on these a little bit more bold. Because obviously they're going to be quite small. So I want them to stand out quite nicely. And as you saw at the start, I'm going to do one version where it's just a flat colour for the lines. And I'm going to do one where it's a little bit more detailed. Where I change the colour of some of the line art to make it look a little bit softer. And again, I don't want to spend too long on these, so I'm making them quite simple and kind of curvy and cute. Um, they're a little bit more kind of jibby-ish than I'd normally draw, but that just kind of helps to exaggerate the features if they're used in a smaller kind of format, like an icon. I'm making sure to keep some like slightly heavier shadows in the lines as well, um, so that again, it just kind of shows the form a bit better when it's small. Um, like under the chin, I'm leaving a big shadow. Uh, I'm getting some big shadows in the hair. Some of it I'm blocking in as um, a solid shape with the dark. I'm also adding more of a shadow underneath the noses that are more turned down so that we, again, get a little bit more shadow underneath them. And when I do the ones that have got um, more kind of softer lines on them, after I change the color of the lines, then it's gonna soften out the shape a little bit. It's not gonna look quite as harsh. You can see me starting to get a little bit picky about these now and kind of like redrawing stuff and making sure that it looks right and um, just kind of like nibbling at it a bit too much. Um, which is why I'm, I'm trying to do a lot of them so I get used to doing them in batches and um, just like able to kick stuff out quicker. I've found that it can be a little bit more motivating when you've got like a whole set of things to do. You don't tend to like overthink a single piece that you're working on because you know you've got a bunch more stuff to go and finish. Um, so I think that helped. Like if I just did one, it might be a little bit difficult, especially when I'm just trying to like build the style <laughs> to have a reference for. Again, I'm trying to make like certain parts that are in shadow just completely um, a black color because again, I can go and change the color of the line art later for them. Or if it's just like flat colors and this is all the um, other line art that's gonna be on it just in this solid color, then it's gonna look fine and kind of exaggerate the form a little bit. Um, the pencil that I'm using or the brush that I'm using is the ink brush that I usually use for just sketching But I think it adds quite a nice flow to it. It's not quite as blocky as the pen tool um, It's got a little bit of texture to it as well Which you can't really see while we're zoomed out this far But if you were to zoom in a little bit more it does have a little bit of a grain to it So it doesn't just look um, completely flat and clean I used to be really, really into using the pen tool and having it really aliased so it was really gritty and pixely, but I've kind of gone off that in the past couple of years and I've moved more towards wanting things that are a little bit more smooth, maybe have a bit of texture in them, and especially after um, testing out this brush for sketching, I've just like used it for pretty much everything. Like I've tested it out with line art and it looks really nice, it's really comfortable for sketching in. Um, and because I'm using it for sketching as well, I'm kind of thinking in the same way with it um, as the way that I'm going to be doing the line art um, because it has like exactly the same flow. So at the same time that I'm sketching, I'm thinking how it's going to be reacting to lines. With these, I'm trying to get a few different expressions and stuff in as well so that it's not just kind of flat and boring. So we've got like a bit of a squishy, <laughs> squishy face on my dude here. Something that's kind of part of my style that I like to exaggerate as well is that people have different like body shapes and different face shapes um so I'm trying to like get a bit of a mix of them my characters kind of have a mix anyway um because I like them to look kind of like strange and different from each other uh but I want that to be kind of obvious in this even though they're like a little bit smaller than I'd normally draw them a little bit more exaggerated I think that's something that um, is potentially quite appealing to people to know that their character if I draw them isn't gonna look the same as someone else's character that I draw or one of my own characters that I draw like for example that bird dude that I'm also drawing looks completely different to any of these characters can you guys see what I'm doing here though by like avo avoiding the hands <laughs> I've got to the point where I can 
pretty much kind of freehand drawing hands. I try not to, that's why I'm still like doing the sketch and stuff. Um, but I think like a lot of people find it difficult, but I've been like forcing myself to sketch them lots and lots and lots for a long while. So I can kind of um, draw them a little bit more easy now. I also have a kind of bad habit of saving ones that I or things that I don't think are going to turn out very well or the sketch looks bad until last. I wasn't too happy with this one um, but it ended up actually being one of my favourites once I managed to go and fix it and draw all the lines out. Um, I, I like this dude's way, it's one of my faves. Um, I'm not going to talk about my OCs because they're, they're kind of dumb but I, I like Boyo and his, his little dog friend. I, I always draw him with little dog friend. So now I've got all that done, I can go and select around everything and we can get the base for everything and start filling in the colours. And I'm trying to make the backgrounds on the circles at the back kind of relate to the colours that are already in their designs so that they work nicely with them. Um, which you'll see in a second as I start adding them in. So we've got like turquoises and like purples and greens on the next one. Uh, then we're going to have like primary colours like red, blue and yellow. I'm also trying to make these quite pastel-y so that they kind of stand out on their own against the um, line art which I'm going to change the colour of later even just for the flat line art that's one colour I'm going to make it a little bit more towards the colours that are in each of them so we're going to have like one that's a bit darkish dark blue colour one that's like dark purple uh, like dark brown for some of them like an orangey kind of burnt umber colour um, again just to soften them out a little bit because it can be quite harsh when you've just got solid black for lines um, especially when they're against pastels which is what I'm going to start changing now so like this I'm kind of like picking the colours that are in them or like the most dominant colour in them and running with those and back onto the bird fellow we are still having a bit of a mess about with the colours I, I started with one I wasn't quite happy with it um, finally decided on more of like royal blue and a kind of soft reddish pink and I'm doing this all on one layer so it's uh, one layer set to hard light over the top of everything and I'm using a blue and a pink and I'm just swapping between the colours and picking everything out just in a cell shaded style and what I'm gonna do once I'm happy with it I'm gonna go in with an airbrush and just soften out some of the edges so that it does seem like a little bit more rendered and a little bit less um, kind of aliased and cell shaded uh, just messing about the colors again a little bit to see like how strong I want it um, I made it a little bit darker just to increase the contrast um, adding in more shadows and highlights into the background and here I go with the airbrush now, kind of evening stuff out a little bit, making it softer. And I'm also thinking about what kind of light and I'm going to be putting on the other side because I want a little bit of a secondary light just at the side to light up the side of his face a little bit and separate it out more from where his wings are. And I decided to make it sort of a soft blue and fade it out on his wings a bit, a little bit, so that it looks like it's the colour in the back kind of seeping through in between his wings and the back of his face. And it's going to give us like a little bit of distance in between them so that his wing looks a little bit further back. And now I'm doing the same as what I'm going to do with my other little icons, which is putting the transparency lock on the lines that I've got and going and painting into them and changing the colour of them a little bit so that I can put the details in his eyes, I can make what lines that I've got left a little bit softer and just add in a bit more glow over the top of everything to soften it out a little bit and a few little overpainty details to fill it out and there we go, he's finished! And back onto these ones again, starting to fill them out with the lines a little bit, the transparency lock on and painting in little details like the eyes and stuff. Now what I tend to do is start around the face and just go over the things like the nose and that in a bit more of a kind of pinkish colour to make it look more fleshy like this. And what I'll do is make sure that this dark colour that I've got is only around the very outside of everything. So um, if you were to draw just the line around the edges if it were a silhouette, that's the only part that I want to be um, completely dark. So what I'm doing is going and picking different colours for different things that are like slightly darker versions of each of the colours and putting them over the lines of everything that isn't like around the edge of something. Um, so I'm doing that like with the hair, with the top, uh, skin like this, 
uh, and you can see it makes like everything inside softer but we maintain this silhouette that we've got with the darker colour around it and that keeps it looking a bit more like a sticker. I'm still like amazed that I can do this. I, I really, really love it. I think I figured it out um, a couple of years ago or someone helped me out with it and told me how it worked. Um, and like, wow, I'm, I'm just amazed that I can do it because I couldn't fathom how to change the color of line art um, before I figured this one out. But like, wow, I love it. It's my favorite thing in the world because it, it just makes stuff look so nice. Uh, adding some little highlights on again, uh, these are going to be the fancier ones where the line colours change, it's got a few more little details like the highlights in. What I'm also going to do with these is add a little bit of a gradient onto the back of them and a little bit of blush and details on the cheeks, like um, freckle, <laughs> speckles. Um, but the colours I've put in the background are just ones that kind of work but are slightly off from the main colour, just to make them a little bit more interesting. And uh, yeah, there we go, we're done. I hope this helped. If it did, give us a like, share if you think it'll help someone else, and subscribe for new videos on Fridays. I'll put links down in the description to where I post stuff, as well as a link to the Discord group where you can come and chat art stuff with us, as well as where you can get prints of stuff that I've drawn, and my commission information if you want to get one of these icons. Lastly, here's a few other videos, and let me know in the comments if you guys like these, and if you prefer this kind of speed of video. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, bye bye!